It's not the first time that we talk about the XR2, the new upcoming processor from Qualcomm, ready to power our next generation VR and AR headsets. I've been recently invited to a closed door event from Qualcomm itself, talking about the future of the platform and the future of the AR and VR computing. Hey, Ty here, so welcome to the VR Tech channel and mostly be ready for a new wave of AR and VR headsets, or should I call them viewers? Let's get into it. First of all, I want to point out that yes, we are living in the future. I attended this event in person using my Oculus Quest, using one of the few applications coming very soon for business on the platform called Spatial VR. The best part of the experience though was to create your avatar because you can have your own face in VR. I mean, sort of your face in VR, but I really suggest you to try it by yourself because, well, a laugh is kind of a inevitable. But let's get straight to the topic because Qualcomm told us their plans for the future, where we're moving and how we're gonna get there. So they of course started with 5G because of course, when we talk about the future, we have to talk about the word that is most used ever in this topic and that's 5G. 5G will be part of the XR2, but the reason why you should be triggered by it is because of the edge compute, the ability to amend the processing capabilities of your headset. Imagine being able to run a very demanding game like Half-Life Alex or something even more on a standalone headset with a mobile chipset without the need of a PC, but outsourcing the graphical power needed both from the headset and the cloud. And that's what Qualcomm is working on together with Ericsson and Nvidia and what they are calling Boundless XR, combining the Nvidia cloud infrastructure that we saw on the Nvidia GeForce Now, for example, and SDK and the Qualcomm optimization on the client side. And the good news is that the trials are gonna start in the second part of the year and it's gonna be available already next year. Now, we have to go back a little because we know Qualcomm because of phones. 90% of the time that we talk about Qualcomm is because we are talking about processors on our smartphone, for example. And that's from the smartphones that the interesting parts comes in. Of course, they want to use the computing power of your phones housing the chipset to power your future headset. That is gonna bring two major upsides. One is that you own and you will own a phone already. And the other is that your headsets, or as they like to call them, viewers, are gonna be lighter and smaller because they're not gonna need all the hardware inside to run your experiences. On a way, it's like to go back to the Gear VR era, but in much more redefined way. This time we're not gonna have to put the phones on our faces, but instead just connect it to our smartphone via cable or wireless, even if that is gonna happen a little later. That doesn't mean that the standalone headsets will be scrapped, it just means that we are gonna have the possibility to choose if we want one that connects to our smartphone or one that works by itself. But I'm very curious, do you like the idea? Which one would you prefer, by the way? But are we gonna know if our phones and our headsets are gonna be compatible with each other? Well, Qualcomm created a XR certified, a new certification that you're gonna find on your headsets or on your phones when you're going to buy them. So, well, you know that you're ready for AR, VR, or as some like to call it, XR. But let's get to the exciting part, of course, the headsets themselves. We had the first sneak peek at the headsets coming soon with the smartphone support with VR and AR headsets from Pico, Panasonic, and Real, Oppo, etc. We already saw some of these from the VR is getting smaller video that you can check out over here, by the way. And you're gonna be able to buy them not just by themselves, but also as a combo with some operators around the world. The first one to be announced will be the one from XR Space that will be announced actually probably right now in this moment I'm watching this video. And it's a very interesting headset. It's gonna house the Snapdragon 845, so more powerful than the Oculus Quest for example, and it's gonna have 60 OF tracking. It's from one of the HTC founders, and to be honest, I can't wait to see more about it because it's gonna ship also with the new software, XR Spaces, as they call it, that is pretty much what they define as the oasis in VR, where businesses and regular people can come together in this second life, stuff like that. Now, most of these headsets are gonna launch during this year, in 2020, and some in early 2021. And while I really like how this thing is taking direction, well, on the side, I'm a little worried about the XR certification because 
many of the people, they're really not gonna know the difference between a 60OF headset, a 3DOF headset, or viewers, as they like to call them. Because, you know, there's a difference between an Oculus Quest and an Oculus Go. And well, the same thing is gonna happen over here. There's gonna be the certification, so maybe you know that your phone will be able to run these headsets, but on the headset part, probably some people are not gonna be able to know if they're buying something more for gaming or something more for just the media enjoyment. And it's kind of weird to still see headsets for just for media purposes, 3DOF in 2020. But as I said in the past, I'm really excited to see these VR and AR headsets to get smaller and smaller. I'm pretty happy to use my phone as a computing unit of these headsets because let's bear in mind that these, uh, for example, the S10, this is already pretty old and uh, the price went down a lot as a processor that is much more powerful than the one on the Oculus Quest. So imagine the possibilities if you can use a Snapdragon 855 or 865, what we are having this year with these viewers. The graphics is gonna be much better, it's gonna allow even higher resolutions than before. And at the same time, you have something that is smaller, lighter, you can wear for longer, and hopefully has a good tracking because some of those had cameras on it as we saw and some not. So that's where you can really see the difference between headsets for 60 OF and not. And the last note of these headsets are gonna run on Android because of course here we're talking about Qualcomm and Qualcomm doesn't collaborate with the iPhone that they have their own chipset. So don't expect this coming to the iPhone anytime soon. We know though that there are different rumors about the Apple glasses that will come around 20, 2021, 2022, how many 20 did I say? I don't know, but uh, those are very interesting. It seems like those glasses are gonna connect to the iPhone as a computing unit in the same way we see here of what is gonna happen and they're gonna connect wireless. And it's something that they said it will happen very, very soon after this first run of headsets connected with a cable to your phones. But let me know what you think about it in the comment below. Are you on board to have these headsets using your phone as a computing unit? Or do you prefer just a standalone headset by itself and that's it? Let me know in the comment below. And as always, guys, if you liked the video, like. If you didn't like the video, dislike. Subscribe to the channel for more about VR tech. And if you love the channel, well, you can join down there. And remember that now we have the t-shirts. They are the back to VR t-shirts and sticker that is super cool or the one with the channel brand as well. So if you're interested, well, those are there. Thanks to all the supporters, of course, of everyone who support the channel. This is very, very needed. And we're not many, but growing, right? Think about it. And I see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao.